Nice seeing you all. Thank you for joining us. So we are at the, our uh, out of school time community meeting, and I'm so, so happy to see you all joining us today. I am Paula Adams with the Hawaii After School Alliance, and we have a wonderful team for today's meeting. So I'm going to pass the mic to Lexi, and she's going to get, share some announcements with all of us. Thank you, Paula. Um, yes, welcome everybody. Like Paula said, we wanted to first start off by recognizing that it is After School Professionals Appreciation Week. And so to all of you, we are incredibly grateful for the work that you do to support our Kiki and their Ohana. And thank you for joining us today. We are continuing to work on building out our summer database of programs. And if you haven't done so already, we would greatly appreciate it if you could fill out a short form so that we can add you to our database. I just put that link in the chat. Um, and so to those of you who have done it already, thank you so much. On our website, you can find a spreadsheet of all of the summer programs that we have collected thus far. And shortly, we'll ha be having a map up there as well. And then the last announcement I have is our next OST meeting will be in two weeks from today on May 7th. And we'll once again be having rotating breakout sessions like we will today. Um, and the goal is to gather the larger out of school time community for a little bit of a talk story. We host a variety of meetings throughout the week and the month with after school professionals and staff from different groups who get the chance to chat about their successes and challenges. And so we wanted to foster this conversation on a larger scale and get everyone at the same table in the same conversation. And so to accommodate for a variety of schedules, though, we will be switching the meeting to 12 p.m. noon. And we hope you all will be able to join us for that meeting. And I will put the link in the chat to register for that. But thanks again for joining us. And I'll pass it back to Paula. Thank you, Lexi. So today we are having a, a wellness meeting. And I wanted to share with you the, the our quality guidelines. A lot of you know about it. It's a guidelines for after school programs that we work together with the Department of Human Services, the Department of Health, and of course, the Department of Education. Lexi is going to put the link in the chat. And today we are going to work in two of uh, those guidelines principles. One is the physical activity and the other one is the nutrition. But please feel free to check them out. Uh, it's very useful to see where you are the areas you can improve. And then of course, how we can work together to make after school and summer programs a very special place for our students. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, our COVID activity guide. Um, the after school network in Alaska put this amazing COVID activity guides that we are able to share with all of you today. And because we wanted them to be unique for Hawaii. We partner with PAL Places to help integrate the Naho Penaao framework into the guidelines. And they did an amazing job doing that integration and they will share with that the guidelines uh, with you later today. Um, it's, it's very special to have these guidelines and also being able to use them with all of your kids. These guidelines have four different uh, age units, as you can see in the screen. And also, the, you can adapt these guidelines for uh, the in-person programming as well as virtual uh, programming as well. So uh, saying that, I think uh, Lex is going to put the link in the chat, or maybe she already did. And I hope you enjoy the presentation. And I'm going to pass the mic to Jen. Okay, thanks, Paula. Um, so, hi, everyone. Um, we have a very exciting hour planned for today. We are going to be splitting you up into three breakout rooms, and then each room will be led by our facilitators in one of the three activities we have planned today, physical activity, nutrition, and then also learning about the COVID activity guide. So after 15 minutes, we'll be rotating the facilitators. You'll get to experience all three activities. So there'll be a total of three 15 minute rounds. And then all you have to do is basically just stay put in your breakout room, and then we'll be rotating the facilitators for you. Um, after the three rounds, we'll bring you guys back into this main room and then we'll have, we'll wrap things up. 
any questions on what we're planning to do? Okay. Um, so without further ado, I'm excited to introduce our facilitators for today. Leading us in the physical activity round, we have Joshua Akiona from Hawaii 5210. He's also the assistant coach to Punahou School Athletic Performance Center and current US Army Reserve Staff Sergeant and Army Master Fitness Trainer. Um, we also have uh, leading the nutrition activity, we have Kobe Takeda from Blue Zones Project Hawaii and also Kaho Omiki. And helping Kobe, we also have Paula Adams and Brian Wang from the Hawaii After School Alliance. And then leading us in the COVID activity guide, we have the ladies from Palace Places, Jermaine Escoto, Loke Wakine Kona, and Tara Farron. Um, so very exciting things happening. Um, I am going to take a um, minute to assign people to breakout rooms. So are you guys? Nice to see you. I really like this small room. I I'd rather have a like a one to one conversation than the large room with a lot of people. So thank you so much. So we have Brian and Colby joining us and leading the session. So I'm going to pass the mic to them, to Colby. You want me like to start? a quick introduction, Paula. <laughs> <laughs> so because okay, I, think, yeah. I feel like uh, I already shared with you guys, but uh, in the presentation, I shared the quality guidelines um, and I can put the chat, the link again in the chat. Uh, and today in this session, we are going to talk about the, the quality guidelines that talks is the principle number seven that talks about nutrition. And the idea is that programs environment creates a social environment, including positive relation, which promotes and encourage children and youth to enjoy, enjoy healthy foods. So that's what we will be focusing today. In, in this session is how we can promote healthy habits through healthy nutrition and healthy foods. And the first thing we are going to do instead of me and Colby and Brian talking, we are going to have an interactive activity and Colby is going to guide us through that activity. Thanks, Paula, and happy to see all of you today. And, and my colleague, Megan Yarberry, who works at the Blue Zone Project Schools. Hello, Megan. Um, so I'm gonna drop in here, we're gonna do a jam board together. Has everyone done a jam before? All right, so all you gotta do is click on that link and you'll be joining us on this jam board. We're gonna be on the first slide, which should say, what are the barriers to promoting good nutrition in after school and out of school time programs? So please join us. We're gonna actually build on this after every session. So we wanna have a, a, a a list of uh, lots of different ideas on what are the barriers because we want to try to solve those barriers. So please drop in sticky notes. You can write in there. You can um, food. You can drop sticky notes. You can move them around. You can change the color. Let's spin them around. We'll spend a little a couple of minutes on each of these slides. There's four of them, and uh, we'll see what we come up with together. And of course, um, I'll start reading some out. And and if you guys have any ideas, you want to. Um, comment on any of these, um, feel free to. And I also try to bucket things together. So if I see two that are this similar, I'll put them next to each other. And we'll see if there's any trends we can find with different types of barriers. Ah, I like it. Unhealthy food fundraisers. Yeah, fast food culture. Absolutely. Although I can honestly say I haven't been to McDonald's in over a year and a half or so. Fruit snacks are so yummy, yeah. That's interesting, there's different types of fruit snacks too, right? There's some healthier and some other. Yeah, unhealthy foods are more affordable. It becomes an equity issue, right? Can all families afford healthier snacks? Absolutely. Yeah, too many junk foods available for kids. Oh, somebody wrote the food industry promoting their unhealthy food everywhere. Yeah, speaking my language. Wow, we are filling up this board very, very fast. Awesome. This is great. 
More perishable, yeah, storing is an issue, absolutely. Availability, yeah, it's easier. Okay, this is unfamiliar, oh, that's a good one, yeah, I like that. They're not, yeah, go ahead and add check marks if you want. You can, if you, if you see things that you think are, are aligned with your thoughts. This next to this. All right, let's go ahead and, and this is really awesome. We'll leave some space for the next group. Go ahead and click the next slide for the next uh, one. It says, what are activities to promote good nutrition with elementary age children? So let's focus on elementary first because we know that the After School Alliance covers you know, a wide range of ages. What are some things we can do to promote good nutrition with the younger Keiki? Hmm, what can we do? So please proceed to the second slide and then top, there's an arrow at the top and take kids in a garden. Yes, I'm gonna put school gardens next to that. Building vegetable gardens, everyone's on the, the garden. Yes, we love gardens. I have never heard of this fruit and vegetable petting zoo chance to get to know different kinds of produce smells taste textures absolutely. Someone gave me an uh, egg fruit the other day and that was the first time I've have you guys heard of an egg fruit before. Yeah, it's, it's, I haven't tried it yet, but they said it the yolk a sweet yolk of an egg and like uh, so even in my age I not like we tried and tasted everything. Yeah, cooking lessons. I love that. Yeah. There was um, actually Daniel uh, from KCC put together some cooking lessons a while back, but all right. Actually, I think we're running out of time. Let's go on to the next one. This is really good ideas. Uh, of course, you can stay on this or you can, let's go to the next slide though. Number three, so click on the right arrow. What are activities to promote good nutrition with teenagers? And of course you can repeat some of the ones that we mentioned earlier, but if you have new ones, we all know that teenagers have different interests, they have different thoughts, the way they think and learn. What are some ways to... Healthy goals, yeah. Making it cool, yeah. Yeah, that's true. If I if I knew that eating better, eat a little more. This is awesome. Yeah, the cool factor. That's interesting. Just says that perceptions are important for buying decisions and behaviors. Yeah. All oh, role models. Yeah. Unfortunately, Powerade and Gatorade got all the good athletes and they're promoting their sugar beverages instead. All right, and finally, the last one, let's turn it to us now, you know, us as adult leaders and we are role models and how do we become that positive role model for our youth in regards to nutrition? What are some ways we can be positive role models? How do we act and influence positively? Yeah, practice what you preach. Love that. Drinking just water. Yep. Love that. Oh. Yeah, some consistent things, themes here. Yeah, advocate, demonstrate. Really cool. All right, well, with that, thank you, everyone. I want to turn it over to Brian now. And Brian, maybe do a quick introduction of who you are and then go on to the activity. Thank you very much for doing the uh, Jamboard. Hi, my name is Brian. Um, I'm currently going to school at HPU, and I'm interning at Hawaii After School Alliance. So I have a few quick facts to remind you about uh, nutrition. Um, talk about um, fruits and nuts, uh, which make great healthy snack options. Uh, fruits offer themselves as natural refresheners, which provides energy in terms of natural sugars. 
And that's our simple way to obtain a little energy if you're having a sluggish day. Um, both of these snacks are convenient and easy to take around. And all of these are considered healthy. Um, everything should be consumed in moderation as too much of anything can still be bad for one's health. Um, and we talk about um, everyone's favorite fruits and vegetables. Um, you don't need to love them all, but you should definitely explore them um, with time. Um, find the ones that you like. And um, when you're feeling more adventurous, try more uh, because fruits and vegetables are a good source of vitamins, uh, minerals, uh, vitamin C and potassium. Also a great, uh, excellent source for fiber, which can help maintain a healthy gut. And for beverage choices, um, sodas and sugary drinks um, are a dangerous game to play. Uh, they may taste good, but it can affect your appearance of your skin, drain your energy, dampen your mood, cause joint pains. Um, list goes on and on. Um, there are alternatives to sugary um, beverages, which is a great start um, to a healthier life. But overall, um, there's no alternative to water. And I will be passing it on to Paula. Well, we have a, a few minutes left. Um, so I wanted to share some, there are a lot of resources out there that we can share with our uh, workers or the staff that works in front of the kids that can be used to promote healthy habits and to promote a uh, healthy nutrition. Um, there are, you know, of course, Blue Zone Project has a food guide and that you can use a lot of the, the uh, resources that they have, especially in, in a school base. We have the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. They have a whole section of out of school time. And I'm going to put a few um, links in the chat, but then at the end of the session, when Jen uh, shares, um, you know, the recordings, we are going to include all the links and all the resources in that email. So you can have them all together. But for now, there are some, some that you can check. And the Alliance, Alliance for a Healthier Generation, they have a lot of uh, very practical tools that you can use with your programs on how to increase the healthy, healthy habits. Um, the, the CDC also has a very practical tools that you can use. And, and locally, we have a um, COCUA Foundation. COCUA Foundation has a programs. A, one of them is I-9 School, which promotes um, you know, the, the use of local products in schools and local gardening. And they have resources that they can share with you as well. Uh, if you are partnering with the schools, uh, Cocoa Foundation has also a mini grant that um, helps the schools to start their own vegetable gardens. But you need to partner with the school to do that. Um, but now that we have a few more minutes, I would like to open to talk about you know, what, what are your ideas? I know you wrote a lot of ideas in the Jamboard, but I think we can open the mic to you guys. And I love your cat, Megan. My cat does exactly the same thing. <laughs> to talk about, about, you know, what are your own ideas of promoting healthy nutrition within, with our students, with our children and youth? So you can unmute yourself. Matthew, Kate, Megan, Michelle, Lillian. Um, Paula, right now we're working with um, an um, Ka'ala Learning Center, you know, after school, and we're doing these once a week, four week work workshops. And um, it's all about, you know, ancestral you know, practices, but the last one is food as medicine. So, and the kids, so Ka'ala has a field kitchen, which is, we're very fortunate. So the, for the last week, the kids get to help prepare and then eat um, foods that are more nutritious and nutritional and, you know, and they really enjoy it. So it's, I mean, it's just a, you know, it's just a one hit deal, but it's a hit, you know, so. 
And I like that, Kay, because I like the, the idea of promoting food as a process. So it's not just food eating to satisfy your hunger, right? But eating in the whole sense of sharing a meal, sharing a time, sharing a space, enjoying each other's company and, in, and being able to enjoy the meal. Um, so I, I, I really like that, Kay. Thank you for sharing. We have one more minute. So if anybody would like to share, Megan? I put um, a link in the chat. This is a five week, 20 minutes per week challenge, um, but it can be adapted to any kind of program. Uh, and it's basically, it was developed by University of Minnesota and Blue Zones to address childhood obesity. And it's a challenge. So students take a baseline of what they eat during the week. And then they challenge themselves to improve their, their behaviors, whether it's you know recreational screen time, amounts of fruits and vegetables, how much time are they getting some exercise. Um, and it's a turnkey program, so lesson plans can be downloaded and um, you can adapt it for different age groups. Thanks everyone for your time. Yeah, I think we're going to disappear. Hi, Hi. People. that was a quick switch over. <laughs> I was still talking. I didn't realize I had new faces. Hi, everybody. All right. OK, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to apologize and hope no one gets dizzy or car sickness because I've just been clicking all over the place and we've been going in and out of the sharing screen, but hang in there with us. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I had no time to go back. I was still talking in the last one. <laughs> yeah, so welcome everybody. We just want to um, say thanks for joining us. This is an introduction to the COVID activity guide and the use of the Naho Pena A'o or HA framework. I'm Loke Wakina Kona and I work with Cals and Places and uh, Jermaine will share a little bit more about who we are in the, in the next slide. So welcome again. Hey, hi everyone. I'm Tara with Cals and Places and we're just going to do a very quick coming together uh, we do a lot of virtual meetings and it just kind of shifts the energy in the room um, and it helps us to get to know you without actually having to do introductions. So we're going to play a game called this or that. I'm going to give you a prompt and if you could have your screen on, I would ask the students at this point to turn their screen on. Um, I'm going to give you a prompt. If you prefer the first option, you're going to do one hand up. It's this. If you prefer the second option, you're going to do that. Okay, so this or that. When it comes to movies, do you like suspense or comedy? All right, I got my suspense friends out there. Okay, in the mornings, are you a snooze button? Or are you up at the first alarm? Okay, see, I'm getting to know you, I'm getting to know you. On the weekend, your time outside, would you prefer up Malka or Makai? We had a few mountain people, or we had people doing both uh, <laughs> last session. So, um, superpowers, would you prefer to be invisible or mind read? <laughs> okay. Interesting, tough choice. And we'll do one last one uh, just for time. So, when it comes to group work, do you enjoy group work or do you do the whole project on your own? <laughs> Depends on the depends on the task, right? Mm -hmm. okay. All right, thank you. That was fun, and I feel like I know you a little bit more without knowing you. Awesome, Tara. All right, I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen. And okay, all right. So we are, um, like we said, a program called Pals. 
I am Jermaine Escuato. I've been with PAL since um, 2016. PAL stands for Place-Based After School Literacy Support. We um, are all former public or charter school teachers right now on the team. Our program is based on the Waianae Coast where um, it's predominantly Native Hawaiian children. And we provide learning opportunities outside of the class that focus on making place and culture a part of the learning. Um, we have a PALS framework that focuses on four R's and our four R's are relationship, relevance, reflection, and rigor. And what you will see is we took our reflection part, um, which played a huge part in how we um, handled the COVID activity guide. Thanks, Jim. So we were given the this curriculum by the Hawaii After School Alliance, but it was sent to them by the Alaska After School Network, and it was called Learning About COVID-19, just a simple activity guide. And we were tasked with bringing in a local flair to it, just so that there was more relevance for our students and our, and our teachers. And so we started out looking at all of the activities, and we really wanted to change them and, and add in things about Hawaii and what we discovered is that those lessons are actually pretty good all by themselves. And so we didn't want to touch them anymore because they were really, really good. So what we ended up learning is that in the discussion section at the end of each lesson, there was a space for us to use Naho Pena A or the HA framework, which fit in beautifully in tying in the cultural pieces and understandings of, of Hawaii. And so that's where you're going to find the things that we kind of wove into each, each of these lessons. And, and we'll tell you more as we go on, but that's, this is the guide that you're looking at now. All right. There's four guides that um, was provided by the Alaska After School Network, and it was broken down into age groups. So there's the red one that you see ages five to nine, that goes 10 to 12, all the way up to high school. And right now I'm just gonna share with you what their plan um, was and how they introduced it into each of the books. Um, see what I mean about sharing? Okay, so the lesson we, we are gonna talk about right now is for the youngest age of five through nine, the title is Empathy Charades. And every lesson um, has a title, of course, an activity description. It also um, gives you a list of supplies that you will need to prepare ahead of time, the steps to take to conduct the lesson, um, ways in which you can make adaptations or adding extensions to the lessons were also provided, and questions for discussion after, which is very important to talk about after the lesson. And they also provided facts for the staff when you're teaching it in your after school setting and things that you can share with the families that are very um, easy for everyone to have um, a talk at home about it. So in today's lesson, um, at the end, they would provide a hands-on activity and it's called Empathy Charades in our case for today. Um, in an in-person setting, you would take the cards that are already provided to you, cut them out, uh, place them down upside down and then have one person choose a card and act out that certain um, task that they're asking you. So we're gonna do some together. Okay, so I can see all your faces again. All right, so I'm gonna call out a couple of the cards and then we, we're all just gonna act it out as if we're doing charades for someone. So we'll start with an easy one. Wash your hands frequently. Wear a mask. Awesome. All right, the next one is say hi to a friend. All right, the next one is say something nice to your neighbor. That was funny. I love seeing everyone do that one. <laughs> All right, we'll try one more, okay? And the last one is um, give something to your friend. Give something to your friend. Awesome. 
So in a group in-person setting, everyone knows how to play charades, but that's what you would do to encourage um, the thoughts that came out of the lesson. Thanks, Charm. So obviously we gave you guys the, the five through nine activity, but um, at the higher levels, it actually, I think middle school, it was like path to empathy. And then at the high school level, it even talks about health equity. Um, so, you know, it gets deeper depending on the student's age and um, they're actually really well-written and thought out. And I'm a, I'm a former science teacher. There's a lot of good science um, stuff, like what is a virus um, at every level uh, that also include hands-on activities. So it's all, all good stuff. But I'm gonna shift where we came in and try to bring a little bit of place in Hawaii um, to this already awesome curriculum. And it was using the, um, the HA framework. And so if you can show me, if you have a reaction button, I'm gonna try this. Can you give me a reaction button, thumbs up, if you have seen this framework before? Yes, yes, yes. If not, if you don't have a reaction button, you can do. Okay, so it might be, oh, okay, thumbs up. There may be just a few people who haven't seen this yet, but basically um, this framework was developed by the Department of Education to help teachers bring in place and bring in Hawaii to lessons and discussions. Um, if you click, we're gonna share this uh, presentation with you guys afterwards, so you'll have access to the link, but it gets real specific on prompts to help you um, kind of bring this awareness to your students. So uh, their areas are strengthened sense of responsibility, of excellence, of aloha, of total well-being of Hawaii um, and belonging. So those are kind of the areas that they focused in. And if Jerm can go to the next slide. So this was just our process. We kind of looked through the lessons. Um, you know, I looked at the middle school lessons because I was a former middle school teacher and we all kind of split up the work that way. And we looked at the Hoff framework and we thought, how can we bring in uh, this framework through discussion. So that's how we developed our reflection questions that are actually in the, um, in the, in the COVID-19 activity guide. So we thought that by, by asking students these questions, it would tie in not only what the lesson taught, but also how does this relate to where we are, to our place, to Hawaii, to our families. Um, and so that's kind of our thought process on this. And I'll turn it over to Loki. Yeah, so hopefully my, my internet is not too unstable for you, but, but after doing each of these lessons is, is a discussion and reflection space, and as we said, and so for the empathy charade, we want you to revisit that as a student right now and understand that the objectives were to help students know and understand empathy. And so under that, we found in the hot connection, the heightened sense of aloha and total well-being. And so two questions that we posed and Tara will drop the questions into um, a Jamboard, if you can go to that. But the first one is, why do you think it's important to show empathy to others? And under total well-being is, what are some ways you can show empathy for others while the virus is still around? So if you would, just click on the link that she put in there and uh, see if you can answer that. And this is what you would do with students. But if you can take the time and just fill in your answer by dragging one of those um, stickies into place. Yeah, so we've got some from the prior one, but you know, it's to build trust and compassion, for understanding of others, um, having grace and understanding as students are being impacted by social emotional and learning loss, absolutely. So, so as adults, we've got these big um, answers, but for kids, they might have the simpler answers, right? And those are places that we can help kids make, um, develop understanding around this idea of empathy, which can be difficult depending on, on the age levels, especially. So that's just kind of a quick glimpse of how this might work for you. Um, and I know we're very short on time, but thank you so much for participating in this. And we're going to move on to the next place. Okay, the last thing that we wanted to um, share with you guys is we um, have a website if you want to contact us. We're on Instagram, Facebook. We also um, share videos of what we do for our programs on YouTube 
if you have questions and we run out of time, you can save them till the end because at the end, they're gonna let people um, ask questions if there's any. Thanks again for joining us. Actually, Jeremy, I think we have like one more minute if- Oh, I do, okay. <laughs> Why are there questions? I just wanted to add to that, that the presentation, the PDFs that a company will all be made available to you. But you should be able to get those pretty easily. Oh yeah. Any thoughts, Just questions? We're at our one minute mark. We didn't say this, but Kay is here and she is our fearless leader. <laughs> Yeah, so the nice thing about the guide is that, that the lessons are graduated by age level. So they're very much um, related to each other, but they just add a little bit deeper thinking or, or, or more difficult, more difficulty in the task or in the, in the content. So, you know, you'll find that it's pretty easy to use and that's being made, has already been made available, I think, to you electronically. So check those out. They're really good lessons. Oh, you're welcome, Megan. <laughs> See, we were too too long-winded on the, the last one. <laughs> we got good on this one. Okay, see you guys. All right. Hello, everybody. Just got moved. Okay, how's it going? Right. Hello, Matthew, Lillian, Kay, Lexi, Megan. Hello. Oh, a small group on this room. All right. No problem. Okay. So I'm Joshua Kion. I'm here to take you through the physical activity portion. So I hope you're all ready to move. Got a little space to, you know, stand up or, you know, use a little bit of the floor around you. If, if, if not, just do your best on, on working some of these activities. Uh, I, I do encourage just trying them out. You know, you don't have to do the full blown. Uh, version to them. The first thing I, I just want to um, have you guys either chat, uh, put in the chat or say what uh, group group of kids, you know, are you K through three, you know, four through six, or if you got, you know, high schoolers, uh, what uh, age group are we working here? All right, all the way. All right. Yeah, so, okay. So, yeah, that wide range, right? It's it's easier with the, you know, the K through five. As soon as they hit sixth grade, right? There's that that um, I don't want to say that brain dump, but just there's that that youthful joy is lost, right? That desire to just move and play is is, is kind of withered down, and I think part of it is because oh, it's not cool. So my my gearing towards some of these these movements and activities have names that can make it a lot of fun for our kindergartners up to about third or fourth grade. So use those. If not, I mean, with the, with the older uh, kids can just use the regular names like neck circles or, or uh, shoulder circles, things like that. Um, that way it, it puts in their framework as, as they're older, they can understand like, like these are moves, these are activities that, you know, should be doing on the daily for our overall wellness, not just because it's exercise or because we're trying to break the sweat, because just movement in general is going to help us ward off a lot of you know degenerative type of uh, diseases within our joints and avoid a lot of pain in the, in the future. And you know, I, I like to always remind the kids that um, they can use their you know, and, and and not in a bad way, but use their kind of kapuna as an example or their or their parents. Right? I I ask them. Do your parents have issues with their back? Do they have issues with their neck? Well, we're trying to, and they say yes. And I'm like, well, we're trying to teach you these ways to, to stop that from happening. I'm sure they would want that for you. So, so please try to um, learn to do these things the right way. So different approaches for, you know, the different groups as, as you all know. Okay, so getting into the movement. First thing is range of motions, all right? So a lot of, of our, uh, you know, you know, Kiki have been just kind of sitting down, real sedentary. So a lot of their joints just haven't been moving through right range of motion. So we're going to start off with the neck, right? This is huge because, right, being on those computer screens, right, necks can just kind of get lazy and flopped over. So we want to open things up to 
staring up at the sky or staring up at, at the, the, the tree line. So rainbows, either starting with your right or left side, just go ahead and work it through. Three to five reps, looking from one shoulder over to the other shoulder. Okay. With, with my elderly groups, you know, usually some experience like kind of vertical. Um, so I generally don't have, you know, you go all the way if that's the case. Starting off slow is the best uh, bet for that. Okay, so automatically, you already feel like I can breathe a little bit better. I encourage, you know, you know, as much as possible, get them to breathe in through the nose, breathe out through the mouth. Now, the next one off of rainbows called the turtlenecks. So making like our head is in a shell and we're just trying to peek it out of that shell, right? Definitely not a good position, but a good end range of motion. And we're going to oppose that with tossing that head back as far as we can. And you can almost feel through all our cervical spine here, all our neck, the things start to kind of line up and kind of crunch. Whoa, we haven't been there in a while. And just moving three to five reps, right? A little fun doing a little turtleneck, but kind of a good way to set ourselves into a better posture, right? After having just been over looking at a screen or you know, always looking at the phones, right? You can actually make some good change. And also again, try and take a, uh, take a few breaths. Oh, can we breathe a little better if we establish a better line through our, our um, uh, through our necks and allow ourselves to get a little more oxygen there. All right, moving through to the shoulders next, right? So it's just simply arm circles. A lot of times when you warm up, we're just like, yeah, okay, just gonna, you know, get some blood flow. But I actually want us to really target into that shoulder capsule, right? So I call this the robot arms. Right, where we're just real mechanical with it, going slow. I mean, younger kids, they get a kick out of it because they're like, mm -hmm. we can just kind of, you know, make those sounds, make that activity. Mm -hmm. back, look it back, you know, first, first, right? But as you can see, trying to keep those arms straight, trying to keep it as close to your body, we're like, wow, it gets really sticky over here. It's where it's really hard to straighten out the, the arms. Like, this is really a good place to start to open up that joint for real, right? Not just to just all oh, get loosened up, but really pay attention to those shoulders because again, it's really about maintaining better posture, right? While working through activities. So once that can get set, oh, we're gonna feel a whole lot better about doing all our other uh, activities. Next one for the shoulders, right? More common we see that, you know, a lot of people do that shoulder up back and down, you know, to just, you know, fix things up. I call these choo-choo trains where we're just straightening out those arms and moving it through our circles, right? And as you can see, you know, kids know about the bottom of those uh, uh, choo-choo train wheels. It's just chicka, 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 right? Trying to keep those arms straight or in both directions, right? And that gives, you know, a lot of the kids just a good awareness of, you know, how to move at, at their shoulders and really be more you know, flexible in that kind of kind of realm. So hopefully we had, had some fun working through that. I don't didn't quite see anyone miming the, the ch -ch 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 -ch. Anyway, All right, stand up if you can. We're gonna go ahead and move through a hurdle or a hurdle circle. So you can use your chair, you can use a desk or something on your side to just go ahead and you know have yourself keep your balance. But if not, you just have your arms at your sides to kind of hold yourself. You can stand on one leg lift your knee up and try to pretend that there's a hurdle right to the side of you you're trying to turn it over and around we'll tap the ground and try to work ourselves over and get onto the other side tap the ground and then try to work it back over so again yeah you can use that balance and hold ourselves nice and steady three to five reps is all we need to get ourselves up and around right we'll start to feel some kinks here and there with the with the hips, wow, I'm seeing some great hip mobility here. Great control, All right? Also a huge balance component. There's a lot of limitations that can sometimes creep up and this is a great way to address them and just get some motion. Good. Next one, we're gonna move down to our ankles. So this one's real great, especially to make sure that um, we're getting you know, pretty good awareness of you know, some limitations that kids are having because they're just not spending enough time on uh, uh, various surfaces. Often we're in that urban jungle, so that's just going to be always flat, 
on concrete pavement, oftentimes not spending enough uh, time in grass or you know trails or rocks where it's kind of challenging the ankle thing. So this activity is called the ankle alphabet, right? Drawing the capital letters. You're gonna use a chair for balance. We're drawing the capital letters of the alphabet all the way A through Z, right? And again, good balance component to it, but also a little fun for some of the, the, the younger kids so that they can you know, work through their alphabets. I'm sure they're already using it now, right? When you're washing your hands, it's in your ABCs, right? So as you can, you can feel, once you get around you know, to G, okay, things are getting a little tired there. We're getting a little tough on our shins to, to get all the way through. So this can go you know, um, really well over time and get you know these kids joints to be a little bit more limber we assume that they're young and they're you know definitely supposed to be that way but again that increased sedentarianism you know just being uh, more glued to screens isn't giving them that opportunity to, to go through all these range of motions so that was one set of activity the next one is getting a warm-up more focused into the midsection or the core as we say uh, the trunk you can also talk of it as a trunk sometimes some kids don't know like what exactly a core is so like we're a strong tree trunk right um hips and then hamstrings so i know it's a lot of hamstring tightness in um, kids just through um, being seated so uh since all of you most of you are standing we can start off with the, the hamstring one so inchworm so if you got some space and you can do it you're going to stand up try to go with a uh, leg staying as straight as possible if not slight knee bend okay you're going to go ahead and try to reach towards the ground and then slowly with straight arms try to walk your body out to a plank here okay just in that push-up plank okay from there we're going to keep our legs nice and straight and then do this inchworm part where for this tippy toeing as straight arms as you can and as far forward as we can so we end back up where we started and then we walk hands out again okay oh this one's tough right we're starting to feel a lot of issues in with the hamstrings and it's okay i mean the best thing is to just keep that good old-fashioned try right trying our best trying to keep the legs straight and hey mister this leg doesn't stay straight i'm like that's okay keep trying try to just work through it mentally and more and more that it, uh, that'll improve so inchworms real cool name to it. We also use that in this community uh next one spider man's or spider woman's however you want to play it um we can stay away from the man woman thing and just say spider lunges uh you know imagine that we're that superhero walking along the, the walls of you know the the chrysler tower or whatever but using the floor instead so still kind of staying low go ahead and try it with you Walk our hands out, try to reach our foot all the way up to our hands, staying low. So really good hip mobilizer. And you can go in circles, you can go, you know, straight on, and it's just constantly just walking side to side, trying to reach those legs up as we're staying low. So really getting those hips kind of opened up. Still kind of a little fun activity for the, the younger kids. For the older group. We tend to just want to make it, you know, staying in place and then uh, working a little bit of rotations. Typically that tends to free up a lot of their backs. They're, they're typically the ones that don't move enough. So we tend to add in some, some twist to that. All right, one more, I'm almost out of time. So attacking that trunk. So a lot of us already know how to work in a plank, right? You know, doing a plank is, is great. Hold the plank, generally I call that activity, but we don't have to be doing it for minutes on end or, or just, you know, you know, 40, 30 seconds, okay, hold. You know, we can go ahead and add in two point planks, so three point plank, whether it be from hands and feet, okay, left leg up, right arm up, you know, or do a circle where it's just kind of a star pad, boom, you know, <laughs> just kind of get, get some play with it. Give me elbows too, just relax the palm. You can go ahead and you know work in the legs or kind of work in you know arm extended. Just go ahead and play around with that. We don't need to necessarily just stay in place the whole time, right? 
having some fun with just, you know, Simon says type thing or a, you know, okay, left arms, right arms, you know, or if, if you work in geography with the class, you know, a lot of, I mean, or whatever it is they're, they're doing in school, sometimes we say, um, you know, California, you know, that'll be your left arm, New York, you know, your right arm, um, those kinds of things. Um, so I got a couple minutes left. Um, as far as like designing workouts, of course, circuits work the best with bigger groups, three to five sets. You can establish like 30 seconds of movement with 15 seconds of rest. Uh, but main thing is getting um, the kids through certain ranges of motion. So uh, typically with burpees or push-ups or squats, we're just kind of staying in one place. And, you know, that's great enough for, for breaking a sweat. But we also want to introduce some movements to the side, some movements working, um, you know, uh, side to side or twisting. So a nice little activity in the last minute I have here to introduce called penguins. Get on the ground, knees up on your back. It's almost like you're holding a little crunch. You're just trying to shift side to side, touching the heels. We'll say, let's call it heel cracks. Penguins, good activity here um, for working in as like a core finisher. You can do 30 seconds on, 15 seconds off. Got our skater hops where it's just going in place, especially when you don't have a lot of uh, area. So go ahead and run around. You can definitely get them on good single leg work. And then uh, lastly, the swimmer, right? Where you can have them just you know, swimming, 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 with those postural muscles, glutes, also the shoulders, getting them to work through some good ranges of motion. Any questions? We've got like 30 seconds. I uh, hope you all had fun <laughs> just moving around. Getting in some some activity. Thank you. <laughs> All right, breakout rooms will close. Well, thanks so much for being. Um, we just wanted to share a couple more things um, before we wrap up. Okay, hi, <laughs> um, I'm Trisha. I'm an intern at Oahu 4-H. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about our Oahu Olopono Challenge. Um, so basically, it's going to be a walk or run or jog from May through June, and um, you're going to either choose from three different um, distances or challenges, which would be 30 miles, which is the equivalent um, across Oahu, and then 40 miles, which is equivalent from like the top to bottom. And then um, there's also 134 miles, which is all the way around the whole island. And then for the month of May and for the month of June, there's gonna be two optional challenges, uh, one in May, which is clogging. So um, this is where you can pick up trash while you um, walk, jog or run. And then in June, there's also gonna be a photo or um, drawing challenge. So this is um, for kids and parents as well or their families. And we just wanted to create this event to help you know, get everyone to stay active during the summer while also um, incorporating some community service and then have the kids be able to um, set a goal and complete that goal for the summer. Thanks, Trisha. This is a great opportunity to build in those healthy habits for kids. I hope that you guys can participate. Um, and Kobe, I believe I'm turning it to you now. Sure, really quick activity. It's um, basically we're giving away free seeds, uh, vegetable seeds to anyone who wants to learn uh, and grow their own uh, gardens at home. Um, any student, family member, you know, community organization can sign up at virtualvolunteerwithkawaii.org and sign up and we'll send you free seeds. If you're with a group that wants to send out, you know, wants 30 packets of seeds, email me as well or um, email me and then I'll drop my email in the chat and we'll send you a bunch of seeds to give out to your families. Thank you. Oh, and then um, let's see. Yep. We also have the Keiki Rainbow Wellness Challenge happening uh, next month. Uh, feel free to go to kaomiki.org and learn more. You basically can give any of your students grades preschool through eighth grade uh, a scorecard. They can take it home and over the course of a week, complete at least seven of the 11 activities um, to promote healthier lifestyles, everything from uh, well-being um, practices at home with physical activity, walking outside, um, creating your own activity, eating healthier fruits and vegetables, um, choosing healthier beverage options. And if they complete it and submit their scorecard to you, you then tell us how many people completed and we'll send you a bunch of free face masks to give out to the students. So really good opportunity. Uh, we have over 50 schools registered so far, covering about 21,000 students across the state. So if you're from a, a school or an elementary school that hasn't signed up, 
uh, feel free to do so as a after school partner as well. Thank you. Thanks, Kobe. Um, so before we wrap up, we have a very short evaluation. Um, Lexi, are you able to put that in the link for us? Um, and if you fill it out, we'll pick two um, random people to win a $20 gift card to Fudan so you can purchase some healthy food and snacks. Um, and that's uh, all courtesy of uh, Colby at Blue Zones Project Hawaii. So thank you, Colby. Um, and hope that you can fill out the evaluation. I just wanted to give a, a huge mahalo to all of our facilitators and I, I welcome you to give a virtual round of applause or use your emoji reactions um, to share our thanks for them. Um, and then Paula, any closing words? Well, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Paul Places. Thank you, Colby, Shoshua, Brian, Lexi, and Jen, and everybody to join us today. It was a great session. I and I'm I'm very happy because healthy nutrition and physical activity is very very close to my heart. Um, and I I I wish that all of us can keep promoting through our settings in, in school and out of, out of school time as well. So thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in a few weeks. Have a good weekend. Bye, everybody.